And it reads, These things write out unto thee, hoping to come unto thee shortly. This is Apostle Paul writing to his protege, Timothy. And at this time, Timothy is in the church in Ephesus. He didn't put him there, made him the pastor, and now Paul is going through evangelizing. And he says, I'm coming shortly to you. He said in 15, But if I tarry long, if I don't make it there in a short time, Right. That thou mayest know how thou oughtest to behave mm -hmm. thyself in the house of God, right. which is the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. And without controversy, great is the mystery of God. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, and received up into glory. Amen. May the Lord have blessed you to read here to do with the Holy Word. Let us pray. Father, I come one more time. Thank you for another opportunity to speak to your people. So Lord, I know full well that my words have no power, but I know that your words have all power. So speak to your people today. Speak to their hearts and their minds, Lord, change them, Lord, that they will not leave this place the way they came in, Lord, that they will be edified and you will be glorified. Use me as an empty vessel. I ask these blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I like to use for a subject today, how to choose a good church. <laughs> How to choose a good church. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. You know, this may not seem like a, a message that you would need to hear in the church. You probably figure everybody who's in a church is there because they want to be there. And we need to understand, though, we, this can be translated how to choose a godly church. Amen. Just so we get that clear right now. Amen. Hey, we know the no everybody's not good. The Bible says none good, not no, not one. Okay. But we need to understand how to choose a good godly church. Okay? Now, the first thing I want to say is we don't want to have no confusion. When you try to find a good local church, it's good to remember that just like the people in the church, there is no perfect church. Let me say that again. People running around from church to church, saying they're not being fed. Half of them not having nothing to do with the church. They're just members. They're just attending church and they're not in the ministry. But they say, well, uh, you know, I'm not really getting anything out of it. Well, the thing is, if you want to get something out of something, you need to put something into, into it. it. Amen. Amen. It's easy to sit back and say, well, who's not doing what? The first thing I ask people to tell me that is, what are you doing? <laughs> oh, yeah. And that's the end of that discussion. Amen. So there is no perfect church because imperfect people make up the body of Christ, right? But there's many important things, issues, that we need to be considering when we are looking to choose a church. Now the truth is many people have joined, have joined churches or ended up in churches simply because they've been invited. 
They were invited to a church. That's the church they went to. And the truth is, a lot of them are in churches for a whole lot of different reasons. Some people go to church because that's the church their mom goes to. Some people go to that church because that's the tradition they have. That's the uh, uh, religion they're in. The denomination. So they won't, they, they can't leave. They too been in this church for 30, 40 years. So it don't matter if Satan is preaching in the pulpit. Right. They're not leaving the church. Why? Because they're bound to a building. They're bound to a location. They don't understand that the church is not a building. The church is the people. We are the church. Amen. Amen. So, half the time these people don't have any idea at all. Any idea or understand what a good church is or what it should even look like. Amen. The word good, like I said, we need to just translate that to God. Okay? How to choose a godly church. A church is teaching the word of God. All right? Some people have joined cults simply because they was invited. Somebody came and knocked on their door. We know who they are. Invited them to church and they become members. And they be taught false doctrine. And that's where they are. Amen. Others have joined churches because it's close to their house. I had a guy tell me one time, well, Pastor, I ain't been coming because, you know, there's a church right across the street from my house. I said, well, brother, if it's convenience you're looking for, just walk on across the street. <laughs> but if you're looking for the Word of God, you need to make sure that's there when you get there. Because it's not about no convenience when it comes to salvation. Amen. You want to be convenienced instead of seeking a relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen. And it doesn't matter. If Jesus is not there, the convenience is not going to get you to heaven. Amen. And they're not really knowing what the church is teaching, what it's all about, what does it stand for. Some people in the church become mama there, the family there. they always been there. You hear people all the time saying, uh, we always did it like this. This is how it's always been done. Tradition. Amen. Jesus changed tradition when he came and brought the New Testament. Amen. He said the New Testament is better than the Old Testament. He said if you didn't need a New Testament, you would have kept the Old Testament. The problem is the law can't save nobody. Keeping the law, if we could keep it, couldn't save us anyway. But the truth is, can't nobody keep it. That's why Jesus had to come down and do it himself. On our behalf. Amen. But this happens, people of God, because new converts don't know the Word of God. New converts don't know the Lord. They're coming in blind. They don't. That's why they get caught up in cults. They don't know the truth. So when they come in, they're dependent solely on that pastor or the people who invited them to be leading them in the right direction. Now why is this so important? Because some people are not seeking the truth. Some people are seeking their truth. See, it's only one truth. But if we're seeking our own truth, we can take the Bible and twist it any kind of way we want it. The devil do it all the time, every day. That's why you got people saying all kind of crazy stuff. I don't need to go. You don't need to go to church. I can be saved. Amen. I always ask them, who established the church? Well, Jesus did. Okay, well, when you get there and you meet it at judgment, you tell him that he wasted his time because you really didn't need it. You didn't have no need for what he said. And we'll see how that worked out there. <laughs> yeah. But then, because God don't do nothing frivolously. Everything he doing, he doing for us because he knows we need it. Amen. But we have some people who know they're not in a godly church. But they don't leave because of tradition. Family ties, relationships. Amen. Their denomination. And this is so important, people of God, because there are 4,300 religions in the world. But only one truth. <laughs> 4,300. This is based 
uh, according to an independent, non-religious affiliated organization that monitors the number and size of the world's religion. That's what they do. They're, they're not religious. They just monitor. Amen. They keep it regular. So you got 4,300 possibilities and only one truth. What's the odds of you ending up in the right church? Yeah. Amen. So choosing a good church is a matter of life and death. Because if you choose the wrong one, you're going to be read, led in the wrong direction. Which is not heaven. Amen. You're going to be taught the wrong doctrine. Amen. But listen here. 2 Timothy 4 and 3 says, The time will come when they, they, the unsaved people of this world, even those who profess themselves to be Christians, will say this. I said profess, not possess. Those who profess. Because everybody said they're a Christian today. And do whatever they want to do. Will not endure or accept sound doctrine. He said the time is coming where they're not going to do sound doctrine. They, they don't want to hear the truth. But after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers. They're going to go to teachers having itching ears. They're going to go to teachers and tell them what they want to hear. Amen. It's not going to be no conviction. You hear them all the time on TV. The word sin, repent, hell, none of that never comes out of their mouth. And they'll preach a million sermons. But you'll never hear why. Because it's, those words are convicting. Not condemning. They're convicting. And they're designed to convict. Matter of fact, they killed Jesus for those words. Why? Because they didn't want to hear it. Amen. He said, what, what wrong have I done? Pilate, Pilate said, I don't see no fault in him. He didn't have, they said, crucify him. Why? Because he's bad for business. Amen. We don't want to hear what he got to say. And that's the same thing that's just going to happen in this day. So, to be part of a good church is vital to living the gospel. It's vital to serving God. Amen. But so many churches today have strayed away from the fundamentals of the Word of God. Amen. They have drifted away because they want more members. Amen. They have turned from the truth and turned to fables and start actually worshiping the devil because they got filthy look of money. They, they, they got caught up in money. Amen. That's why the Bible says you can't serve God and mammon. You can't do both. You're going to serve one or the other. Because if you get caught up in money, you're going to start compromising the gospel. Amen. And we can't do that. So in these passages we're looking at today, they show us three qualities. Okay, three characteristics we need to look for when we're looking for a godly, a good church home. Okay, go for church home. Now, the church is referred to because the first one, there's three, but the first one is a good church perceives herself as a family. The church is depicted as a sheep, a her. Why? Because we are the bride of Christ. Amen. Ain't that what the Bible says? Amen. Amen. If you look at uh, Revelation 19 and 7, it says, let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him for the marriage of the Lamb is come. And his wife has made herself ready. Verse 8 says, And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. Yeah, the church is the bride of Christ. That's why he told Israel that he espoused them. He was married to them. That's why he had uh, Hosea go marry a harlot. Amen. And, and show them how they were treating him. Amen. So, a good church, which church is translated, ecclesia, which means assembly. That's what that means. Agree? It means a group of people meeting together. That's what Jesus set up. However, we know the church is more than a group of people meeting together. 
because they, they're coming together in Jesus' name. Amen. That makes all the difference in the world. Because Jesus said, anytime you come together in my name, yes. two or three come together in my name, yes. he said, I'm going to be there with you in the midst. Yes. So any other meeting you have, a, a congregation you have, or whatever it is, if it's not in Jesus' name, if it's not founded on the word of God, he, he's not showing up. That's what he's saying. When you meet in my name, touching and agreeing, he said, I'm going to be there in the midst with you. Amen. But he told us here in this text how we are to behave as a church. Amen. The church is the house of God. We are the children of God. We are joint heirs with Jesus Christ. That means we're brothers and sisters of Christ. Amen. That's what the Bible says. Amen. Now the two main purposes of the church and why it's a family, okay, are found in 1 Thessalonians 5 and 11. 1 Thessalonians 5 and 11. 8. It says, Wherefore comfort yourselves. How? Together. He said, comfort yourself together. Then he said, edify one another. Amen. Hold one another accountable. The God never intended for born again believers to be Christian. No. You're not the long ranger. He never set it up that way. We're supposed to do it together. Because divided, we fall. Yeah. But together, we will stand. Yeah. Amen. God's word is adamant about our meeting together. He's adamant about it as a church. We can read the Bible at home. We can pray at home. We can praise at home. Yes, and we should be doing all of these things. But it does not compare to corporate prayer. It does not compare to corporate prayer. It does not compare to corporate worship. Why? Because of what I just read. When two or three come together touching and agreeing, it changes everything. God's presence is magnified. Yes. Every time they pray together, God moves. Mm -hmm. Amen. And that's why he said that. He, he made it real clear to us. It, we are the ones who don't want to do what he's called us to do. Amen. It works exactly how God set it up. But we don't want to work it. Why? Because we want to do what we want to do. Amen. And that's fine because God created us in His image and after His likeness gave us the ability to choose. Amen. Just understand that the choices we make will follow us for our entire life and afterlife. Amen. We've made our own decisions. Amen. But so if we do those things in a worship atmosphere, fellowshipping with one another, iron sharpening iron, God says, he, Jesus said he's in the midst. If you look at Hebrews 10 and 25, Hebrews 10 and 25, he made it real clear. He said, not forsaking the assembly of yourselves together. He said, don't forsake it. Come up with all excuses you want, but don't forsake it. As the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, encouraging one another, ministering to one another's needs, right? Lifting one another up. Holding one another accountable. He said, exhorting one another and so much the more as you see the day approaching. What day? The day of judgment. We all closer to judgment than we were when we first believed. I know I am. And every day I'm getting closer and closer. So he said, as we get closer to that day, we really need to be coming together and, and, and encouraging and helping one another. Amen. That's what the church is family is all about. So a good church perceives herself as a family. Amen. Now many times, people of God, there's many times that I don't feel like coming to church. Let alone preach. I mean, let's just be real. I get ailments. I'm, I'm just like you. I'm not superhuman. Amen. So, but that's not going to deter me from doing what I know I need to be doing. Because my, my purpose in life is to glorify God. Amen. Not me. Amen? 
It's easy to stay at home. It's, a, it's easy to lay back in the cut. Anybody can do that. But you know, it's amazing to me, and I'm always going to bring this up. It's amazing to me how we will never lay back in the cut when you got to go to work. <laughs> oh, yeah, you go to work sick. Sick as a dog. Why? Is that money? That's why he said you can't serve God in money. I tell people all the time, I dare you to give God just as much reverence as you give your employer. I ain't saying hit nobody trying to get to work on time. Trying to get to church on time, because that's what people do on their job. They'll, they'll, I've seen people, women going down the freeway, putting eyelashes on, 60 miles an hour. <laughs> trying to get to work. I'm like, I ain't never seen one doing that trying to get to church. Because <laughs> she can come whenever. It don't matter. You don't even need to come to church. It, don't, it ain't that big a deal to us. But it's a major deal to God. Amen. Because God is not looking at just what we're doing, people. God, God is looking at our motives for doing it. See, he sees the deep. He knows why we do what we do. That's the difference. We can do some things. People think, we oh, you, that's so out of me. Oh, that's great that she did. God said, no, but because they're doing it for the wrong reason. Their motive is not pure. Amen. That's what the good family church can do for us. Amen. That's the first thing. Amen. So many times I don't feel like being here, but when I get here, Amen. I'm going to praise God. Let the stop playing the organ. Spirit get fired up, and, they, and I can't wait to preach. Amen. Amen. Because God has already even gave it to me. Amen. But God's presence is much stronger in a corporate atmosphere. Amen. It's a, a greater impact than anything we can do at home. Yes, it matters. If you have to be at home, that's a different story, isn't it? Amen. We're not talking about people who have to be at home, who are shut in. We talking about people who at home looking at the basketball game and everything else they want to do. But they won't come to church. God said, okay, that's all right. But listen, Jesus is always present with us. We know that. In the person of the Holy Spirit, right? Amen. He's on the inside. Amen. But it's different in corporate worship. And I'm going to tell you right now why he, why he set it up that way. I mean, a good church home provides for us spiritual power okay insight and the knowledge we need and not only that we live in an evil and fallen world okay every day and our spiritual battery just so you can understand is drained a little bit every day you can say amen you go through the week come around by Thursday Friday you need somebody to talk to you need Jesus you need yeah, you need to be able to, you've been beat down by circumstances, situations, the devil. Amen. All week, dealing with the devil, bombarding you with everything he got. And then on top of that, our flesh is worn against the spirit. So we're just in a constant battle every day. Don't forget that the Bible said we are not worn against flesh and blood. But spiritual wickedness in high places. Amen. And Jesus knows it. So he says on a weekly basis, I need you to come together to recharge your spiritual batteries. Everything we have has to be maintained. Ain't that right? Yeah. Don't plug your phone in tonight and try to use it tomorrow. Awesome. See what happens. It has to be charged up. Right? Yeah. If your alternator stop working on your car, your battery going to go dead. Why? Because we have to, we are the same way. That's why we have to sleep at night or during the day or whenever it is. Try to go 20 days without sleeping. It's not going to happen. You're going to go to sleep one way or the other. Why? Because we need it. It's a need, not a want. Jesus is saying you need this. Okay? So you can stay true. So you can stay uh, power so you can stay strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Amen. And if you don't, if you haven't been to church 
in a few months or a year or whatever it is, you can attest, I don't know, because I didn't know that that was a business time for me. You will go back and tell what, what the world is doing. There's no doubt about it. You will do just like the children of Israel. You will be conformed to this world. And you got people who are sitting up in the church every week that still conform to this world. They know the word of God. But they're still promoting same-sex marriage and everything else. They're just promoting it. And they know better. Being conformed to this world. He told us don't be conformed to this world. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind. How? By the word of God. That you may know what that good and acceptable and perfect will of God is. That's what he said. Why? Because he said, you don't know. And if you don't know, you're going to be going right along with the wrong thing. Amen. Feeling like you right as rain. All right, praise the Lord. I'm going to tell you the truth today. Now look, there's uh, about four things that discourage us. And they all start with an F. Okay? Fear, failure, frustration, and fatigue. Fear, failure, frustration, and fatigue. Those four things the enemy uses to knock us right off our butt. Just just knock us on our butt. All through the week he's trying to do that. Fear, get fearful, start making bad decisions. Amen. Get caught up in self. That's saying, you know, you're trying to do something about it. And God saying you can't do nothing. First of all, I didn't give you a spirit of fear. Right. That came from the devil. Right. Fear is of the devil. Ain't right? you know what he told me? Right. He said, so why you want, because when you're afraid, you're going to act afraid. Yeah. You're going to act on fear. Okay, then you're going to act out. He said, don't do that. Fear of failure. Failure. We, we, we allow the enemy to beat us down. You done messed up. You made a mistake. I love what the deacon said in his prayer this morning. God is a God of forgiveness. Yes. That's why he said when you mess up, fess up. Right. You can come boldly to the throne of grace, he said. To find mercy to help you in your time of need. Don't let the devil manipulate your mind and tell you you don't need to come no more. You don't need to pray no more. You're just a hypocrite. Don't buy that. Don't go for that over your door. That's one of the enemy's best weapons. Why? Because he knows you're a child of God. He knows you belong to God. But if he can steal your joy, yeah, yeah. and I mean steal it, because you got to give it to him. He can't just take it. We, if we allow him to steal our joy, that's on us. But if we don't know the word of God, if we're not in a good church, a godly church, you're not going to be taught right. You won't have that spiritual strength to deal with the enemy. Frustration, oh my God, that's frustration wears us out on the job. Amen. You can say amen. amen. All right, praise the Lord. It wears us out on at home. Frustration wears us out on the road. Amen. And we need our spiritual batteries up to par because if they catch us on the low self, amen. We gonna act out of character. You wonder what happened. You need your battery recharge. You need to be in church. You should have heard the sermon Sunday. Amen. Would have helped you with what you're dealing with today. But you decided that you was going to watch the football game. The basketball game. Right? Amen. Fatigue. People of God, we need rest. We need rest. I work with people who work so much that they fall asleep on the job. They just they just trying to work all the time. Injuries happening on the job. We need our rest. And the Bible said the Lord gives his children rest. Yes. We don't lay up at night. They can't sleep. Amen. Amen. Because we are children of the most high God. So being part of a good church, a godly church. Encouraging church family will cause us to say, like David did, I was glad, Psalm 122 and 1, when they said unto me, Let us go into the house of the Lord. 
David said, I was glad when they said it unto me. Right. Because he knew that's why I need to be. Amen. So a good church perceives herself to be a family. Secondly, a good church protects the Bible. A good church defends the Word of God. Amen. Not only is the church a sheep, but it's the pillar and ground, the foundation of the truth. That's what it says in 3 and 15 D. We just read it, the text. Amen. What is the truth? Jesus answered that in uh, St. John 17 and 17. He said our word is truth. His word. That's the only word that's truth, the word in this Bible. Everything else is a lie. He said, let God be true and every man be a lie. Amen. That's the word of God. Amen. Jesus said he was the truth. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was God. And then he said the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. That's Jesus. He said, I was here in the beginning. I didn't come to be in my incarnation when I was born by Mary. I was here with God in the beginning. Amen. We need to know these things. And a good church, a godly church, will teach you these things. Amen. But we will defend the word of God. The church is not the source of the truth. Amen. The church doesn't have the right to alter or water down the truth of God's word. Like so many churches are doing today. Because they want members. We don't have a right to do that. Yes, people are doing it. And they're packing in there in droves. 10, 20, 30,000. Amen. Just because you got a mega church don't mean everybody that's going to heaven. Amen. It could mean everybody that's going to hell. Amen. Especially if they're not teaching the truth. Amen. The Bible is designed, the Word of God is designed to draw you or drive you. See what I'm saying? When you hear that truth, it'll convict your heart and it'll draw you in because you want to do what's right before God. But everybody who don't want to hear those people who going to turn themselves to teachers with itching ears and all that, they don't want to, they don't, they don't turn to faith. They don't want to hear the truth. They won't endure it, right? They're not going to come sit under that. They're not going to sit under that. Why would they come and put their, get beat up every Sunday? Because that's how they see it. Because if you, if you really want to change, okay, and please God, glorify God, walk upright before God, then the truth is going to draw you in. It did me the same way. But before I came in, I was convicted. You see what I'm saying? But I didn't run. Amen. That's why the Bible said, he said, every son I receive, I rebuke. Right. Yeah. And that's what he means, with the word. Uh -huh. He said, but if you endure the chastening, yeah. he deals with you as a son. Mm -hmm. Right? He said, you, you, you deal with it, it's going to change your life. He said, but if you don't, right, then you're not my son. The Bible said, you're a bastard. Mm -hmm. He said, you don't belong to me. Mm -hmm. He said, if you can't, if you don't deal with what I'm dealing with, you don't belong to me. Y'all, that's the word of God. Amen. Thank you, Peter. We are to teach the word of God without contamination and without compromise. Right. We can't be like the, the, the compromising church in Revelation. We can't be but like the church in Laodicea, the lukewarm church. Then Jesus said, I, I, he, God said, I, I see what you're doing. I see all your work. He said, but I wish you was hot right. or cold. Yes. He said, because you look warm, I'm spewing you out of my mouth. Don't nobody want to look warm. Yeah. You want ice, coffee, or hot coffee? Right. You don't ask somebody to eat no lukewarm coffee. <laughs> ice tea, hot tea. No lukewarm tea. He said, if you were hot or cold, I can deal with you. Right, yeah. right. But lukewarm, nope. he said, I'm spewing you out of my mouth. Because he, he, he used that because we would understand what he said. Amen? Yeah. So we got to be on, on point. He knows what we're going to start is unsaved. He knows we're going to start unlearn, unknowing. And God will meet us where we are. Yeah. He'll meet us where we are. 
He knows he has to do that. He's the one drawing us. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because he don't want us to be lost. Amen. And he said, if you draw nigh to me, I'll draw nigh to you. Amen. And he said, but if you pull, if you pull away, I'm not chasing you. Now you go and pull away. I'm going to be right here when you decide, like the prodigal son, to come back. When he left, he said, I'm going back to my father. And I'm going to tell him, I, I offended him, you know, and God. I, well, the father was still there where he left him. He said, I ain't going nowhere. Amen. God is not walking away from us. We're going to have to walk away from him. So the good church carefully guards the most precious possession in this world, the Bible. We don't compromise it. Amen. Amen. If it's wrong, it's wrong. If it's right, it's right. But the Bible told us too that right going to be wrong and wrong going to be right in an ungodly and wicked world. Amen. And that's what we are today. They making so many crazy laws. And these are educated people, y'all. Amen. That's what gets me. But see, when your mind is depraved, it don't matter how much education you got. Amen. But look, Psalms 119, 105. Amen. It says, the word, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. That's what David said. He said, I can't do without your word. That's why I'm going to hide it in my heart that I might not sin against you. Yes. Amen. Amen. And every time you think of King David, we, uh, there's only two things people remember about King David. I think Mark mentioned it other night. <laughs> Slaying the lion and committing adultery with Bathsheba. Just them two things. <laughs> we always going to remember the worst because that's our nature. We rather see people doing bad than good. Why? Because it makes us feel better about ourselves. Oh, I know I'm teaching. You ain't got to say oh, amen. Just sit there and look down. <laughs> amen. I know I'm teaching. This is the truth. This is the word of God. And we done lived it. We know it. Amen. So in other words, the Bible tells us what is right and what is wrong. It's up to us if we want to adhere to it. But we can't justify it. We can try to do it to ourselves so we can live with it. But there is no justification. Amen. That's why the devil, Satan, has launched an all-out attack on the truth of God's word. Right. Why do you think it's 4,300 religions? The enemy did that. Mm -hmm. Why? Because he's the author of confusion. He, want, he he gonna always pervert scripture. I'm reminded in Galatians one and six, I believe it's one and six. Apostle Paul had taught the church in Galatia who God was, and he said, "I marvel that ye are so soon removed from Him that called you unto the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another gospel." But there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. Mm -hmm. That's all the devil do. He take it and pervert it. So the people will say, the church, he'll pervert the word, pervert the people. And that way people say, oh, well, if you're a Christian, I can keep doing what I'm doing. Because I know, I, if you go in, I know I'm getting in. I'm going to shoe in if you get in. And that's what the devil wants. Because see, they ain't going in. But they are confusing and misleading people to think they can do whatever they want to do. Amen. But keep going. Verse 8. But though we are an angel from heaven, this is Apostle Paul telling the church of God, preach any other gospel unto you than that which thou have preached unto you, let him be a curse. Keep, keep going. As we said before, so say I now again. If any man preach any other gospel unto you, then that ye have received, let him be a curse. He say no other gospel. 
Right. And if it is, they tell you it is, then I call them. Yep. Right there in black and white. Now you don't have to listen. Oh, no, they're not a call. My mama's in there. Uh -huh. My daddy started that. He used to preach. Well, that's fine. Amen. But if you deal with it, you're going to hell. Because, not because I said so, I'm not a judge, based on the word of God. Ain't no cult that's going to be in heaven. There will be no confused people in heaven. Ain't nobody going to be in heaven talking about I'm a man trapped in a woman's body. Or a woman trapped in a man's body. That's not going to happen. Why? Because God is not the author of confusion. Amen. Amen. People tell me, well, you know, I was born like this. I say, okay. I'm not going to argue with you on that. Sin is in the world. We're all born in sin. So you probably was born like that. I'm going to give you that. But the Bible say what? You must be born again. And that's for everybody. Amen. The thief, the liar, the adulteress, it don't matter. The homosexual, it, it, we all fall in the same boat. Right. If you come up here, you must be born again. Yes. Yes. So I ain't gonna argue with them about how they were born, that's fine. I was born in sin too. Right. Right. Yeah. I, I look, I, I know I'm, we all in the same boat. That's one thing, that's what will make good preaching when you know who you are Amen. <laughs> and who you're not. Okay, I'm not preaching at you, I'm preaching to you and me. Yeah. I know. We know. But I don't I don't kid myself. Right. Amen. I'm not going somebody might deceive me, but I won't be deceiving myself. No. It's no. the worst deception in the world. No. Amen. But look, God is always seeking to preserve his word. Amen. And a good church will do that. So that's number two. I ain't got one more quality. Number three. Amen. Number three, a good church, a godly church will proclaim the mystery of godliness. Mm -hmm. What is the mystery of godliness? We already know what it is. Amen. It's, it's, it's redemption through Jesus Christ. Yes. The whole Old Testament was, taught, was leading up to Jesus. Back in Exodus when they put the blood of the lamb on the doorpost. He said, look, I want you to kill the lamb and I want you to put that blood on the doorpost. He said, because I'm sending the death angel through here tonight. And if that blood ain't on that doorpost, he coming in and killing the firstborn, whoever up in there. Mm -hmm. So they put the blood on the doorpost. They were saved by the blood of the lamb. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Soon as John the Baptist saw his cousin Jesus walking up, he said, behold, yes. the lamb of God. Yeah which takes away the sins of the world. Jesus, we've been saved by the blood of the Lamb too. His name is Jesus. Amen. That is the mystery of God in Himself that was hid in the Old Testament, but revealed in the New Testament. And that's what we preach, the mystery. He said in 16, 3 and 16 of our text, Amen. He said, and without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. Amen. We have already discovered his salvation through Jesus Christ. The New Testament revealed it to us. And when Paul is using the word mystery, he referred to the hidden plan of salvation from God. Yes. Amen. That's what it is. It refers to the secret of how we become godly. How do we become godly? Through Jesus Christ. Yes. Amen. But that was a mystery to us. Amen. But in 2 Corinthians 5 and 17, he made it clear. He said, if any man be in Christ Jesus, yes. he is a new creature. Yes. Old things pass away, behold, all things. Yes. And when he said, behold, yes. that's when you know it was a mystery yes. before that behold. Before that, behold, you didn't know how it was going to happen, what was going to happen. But God said, behold, all things have become new. And if you read verse 10, he says, and all things are of God. 
Yes. Go to first, uh, Second Corinthians 5 and 17. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Okay, go to 18. And all things are what? Uh, you know why you put that up there? <clears throat> because before you became a child of God, all things you was dealing with was not of God. Because right. you was dealing with the devil. You were serving the devil. I was serving the devil. Oh. Yes. Yeah. And the person you became when you became born of the Spirit of God never existed no. until then. That's why it said all things. Yeah. Why? Because you were, before you accepted Jesus Christ, we accepted Jesus Christ, we were enemies of God. Yeah. Ain't that what the Bible says? Yeah. While we were yet sinners? Yeah. Okay. After we accepted Jesus Christ, we became children of God. Yeah. That's a totally different position. Right. And God deals with, with us in a totally different way. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. You might send your enemy to jail. Oh. For doing something wrong. Ain't that right? Oh, but let your child do the same thing. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you don't send him to jail. You might beat him. But you love your child. You don't know no enemy. So God does us the same way. Amen. So as I close, that's three. That's three. The mystery of the gospel is the good news. Amen. We were made godly. Amen. By Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, Jesus came in the flesh. These are the four things we have to believe. A good church will teach and proclaim. Okay? So when you get there, if they're not teaching and proclaiming this, you don't need to be there. You need to get out. Number one, that Jesus was manifested in the flesh. That Jesus was God manifested in the flesh. God wrapped himself in flesh and came down from heaven down. Amen. Incarnate. Amen. Number two, he was crucified on that cross. Yes. Amen. Three, he was dead and buried. And four, on the third day, he rose from the dead. If you're in a church that don't teach you that, that's not the foundation of that church, the bedrock of the truth, then you need to find you another church. Am I just talking to you guys? No, this, this video is going on YouTube. I'm talking to anyone who is listening or watching. You might be at a church and say, well, Pastor, I, I've been at this church. I'm not really learning anything. You got to ask yourself the question, why are you not learning anything? Is it you? Or is it the pastor? Or is it the church? Or is it the teacher? Sometimes people go, we need to get involved. We need to become part of the ministry. Okay? If you read on down on that text, he said he gave us the ministry of reconciliation when he reconciled us to himself what does that mean he reconciled us back to God Jesus did he said I gave you the ministry the ability to reconcile other people to Christ so we need to work our ministry but there's too many people who are not working the ministry like I said they come in, in, in attending church like we doing God a favor. We can't do God no favor. It wouldn't matter if we tried anyway. But I'm saying God had did, done all of this for us. Yeah. The church was established for us. You learn today why we need it. Why it's important. Amen. And every member is important. Every member of the body is important. Yeah. Amen? Amen. God bless you. I'm done. We got to have communion. Now I'm gonna we're gonna go ahead and have communion. We're taking the body and the blood of Jesus Christ. Well, right now I better finish so we can finish this video. But is anyone watching or listening on this video, please, if you want to make Jesus Christ ahead of your life, the Bible according to the Word of God in Romans 10:9 and 10, he said, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised from the dead, thou shalt be saved. 
So if you repeat after me this simple prayer, Father God, I'm a sinner. I've sinned against you. I'm sorry for my sins. Forgive me in the name of your son, Jesus. Father, I believe Jesus Christ is your only begotten son. I believe he died on the cross for my sins. And I believe that on the third day you raised him from the dead. I believe according to the Holy Scripture, the Word of God, that if I die believing in you, Lord Jesus, in the last day, you'll raise me from the dead. Lord Jesus, come into my life. Holy Spirit, I give you control of my life. And I ask that you save my soul in Jesus' name. Amen. According to the Word of God, if you said that prayer, but more importantly, if you believed it in your heart, you've been born again. Find your good Bible teaching church and make Jesus Christ first place in your life. You can go to our website at thesolidrockmdchurch.org and we'll be glad to help you with your new life. Amen. 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 Am